All right. We are here in a Minecraft Super Flat world to bring you Hand Guy Builds, the first of a new series where I, Hand Guy, demonstrate how to build some things. First, I'm going to start out with a classic and a favorite here at the Minecraft Corps of Engineers, what we call the uh, Handite style of house. These are common in the northern regions of Kaya, especially in the Handite Empire, but you probably figured that out by now. You start by making some pillars of prefer preferably spruce. You can also use dark oak if you want to be weird, but spruce is better. Um, like so, these form sort of the structure of the house. You can get fancy with the patterning in them if you want, but that's usually good to do um, in the kind of silhouette of the peaked roof. There might be a term for that, but I sure as hell don't know it. So, we've got the basic outline of the house. As you see, it's not very big, but eh, these people may not be very rich. So, then what we'll do is get a little fancy here by putting some stuff in down here. The door, I believe, should go over here. So, we'll do something like that. Then we surround it with these, just to give it a bit more of a feel of like having a foundation. Surround it with these things. And then, time to build the outline of the roof. Yippee, I know, it's so exciting, isn't it? Start out like so. Probably better to start out with the material you're building it from. It's good to use spruce for the roof. Makes it look um, not too, I don't know, makes it look good. If you want to build a house for um, like richer folks, people who are more uh, well-to-do, you might want to use red nether brick for a roof. That actually looks surprisingly nice in this case. However, that's not what we're doing today, so I'm going to stick to the basics. A lot of spruce in this uh, region of the of uh, Kaya, so that's what they use. All right, onto this now. Make sure you don't leave this, because that's ugly. The top line should also be should be all spruce, as should the edges. And then we mirror this on the other side, like so. Now, if you go farther north, you may want to make the roofs steeper because there they have to um, make sure that snow doesn't build up and cause them to collapse. So you may want even two blocks instead of just um, like, like two blocks by one block instead of just one by one at 45 degree angle as you see here. However, it's not too snowy in this climate, so we're just going to do this. And then... We always add a little roof flourish. Now, you can just do this. That's um, pretty common. But since this is, I mean, sort of a nice house, we're going to do a little bit of a fancier one like this. See there? Then do it on the other side as well. Some people may, be, may say that these look like rabbit ears. They do not. They look good. Then put a little cross beam over here and on the other side. And what I like to do is um, kind of build the beams in here around where a kind of centralized window would go, like that. Just gives it a nice look, which I very much enjoy. We'll probably use um, either glass in there or maybe even a fancy stained glass if these people are more well off. Um, all right, so that's the structure of the house. Now we got to fill it in. To replicate uh, the medieval wattle and daub system, we're going to use bone blocks, which actually, um, you wouldn't think of that as the first choice for building the sides of a house, but it looks quite nice, especially in more uh, medieval-inspired builds. Fill the holes in. We'll, uh, we'll just punch holes out for the windows later. It's, it's easier to do it that way than plan for them first. Some people like to do that, but, I mean, me. Eh. You see, this goes quickly. We're going to fill it in here, but leave a little hole there. This is one place where I do like to plan out windows. And then we're going to need a door here because everyone likes a door. Put it like this so there's a little gap in. Does that look good? Yes, it does. Then we're going to grab some dark oak stairs and put them down here. This just makes the house look a little sturdier, and at, I think that it just adds something to it. Gives it that little uh, professional finish. 
Maybe we'll do some up here too. Hold up the roof. Not on these sides though, that would look weird. All right, so we've got the basic house. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of them. No, 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 I'm not. So you got the basic house. Some might say, oh, hand guy, this house is done. But it's not, in fact, it's far from done. Um, because what we have here is the skeleton of a house, the uh, kind of uh, blank slate from which one can build a very nice house. What we need for this is detail. Yay. Gonna grab some glass panes, put them in here. I mean, this is a little high for a window, for head height, you know, and all that, but I mean, who cares? It looks better this way. Let's put them in um, along here, here, and here. And then here and here on the end. Oops, that was an accident. And then on the other side, same old, same old. There. Now, this is a pretty good exterior for a house. If you want to make it look kind of old and abandoned, you might replace some of these spruce logs with jungle, which look like moldy wood and put holes in the roof. But we're not going to do that because this is a lived-in house. Um, oh, one more thing. Let's just do that. A little awning over the window. The door, rather. Um, speaking of things over windows, we need some shutters here. I like to use the newly added spruce trap doors, which look quite nice for window shutters. You can raise them up or close them, but they look better raised. You can also do this on ships. Gives it sort of an interesting naval vibe. Um, and then, since these are kind of nice side windows, we're going to put some flower boxes around them. Yeah, with a grass block underneath. Uh, we're going to have to bust these. Sorry, stairs. And what the heck, just do it all the way. Um, maybe put in another window in the middle. Just for the hell of it. And so that flowers can grow right in front of the windows, we're going to put these trap doors up one block. Then, we're going to use another type of trap door, specifically dark oak trap doors, around the flower boxes, thusly. Oh, night's falling. Eh, who cares? That's fixed. Then, uh, we're going to want to do the same thing over on this side. And then you can put in uh, whatever flowers you want here. I find on a house like this, um, honestly, really anything works nicely here. Rose bushes look pretty good, um, depending on your biome. But we're not going to use those right now. We're going to use some tulips. Red ones, orange ones, and pink ones. You want to do kind of like a um, not not too predictable of a pattern with the colors, so it looks more natural. Because if it if it looks too um, man-made, you know, it looks man-made, and because these are flowers growing, we don't want that. So you get this. I appear to have forgotten to put in this window on this side, so I'm going to fix that right now. Now, we've got the exterior of the house just about done which means it's time to move on to the interiors. That's right, hand guy's specialty. First of all, we're going to break down this door, because we don't need it. In this block, we're going to put a spruce log instead. And then, we're going to do a little pattern with spruce logs in the floor. A lot of people just ignore the floors, leaving it alone, or just a solid form of block, but I don't like to do that. Um, there, You can really get a lot out of a floor if you know what you're doing. Um, actually, I think I will put grass there. Now, the new um, stripped logs, specifically the stripped oak and birch, look really nice uh, complementing the kind of uh, spruce logs that we're using here. Do this. Um, this kind of mosaic patterning also looks really good in um, some more like Middle Eastern influenced builds. Then we're going to use these here to create a sort of flat flooring. Who knows what it is, but it looks nice. Do the same on the other side. And then, now because this is such a small house, we need to cram all of the amenities into a rather small amount of space. 
that can actually get kind of tricky, especially if you're building some very small houses in a city. But a good thing to do is to use slabs to make a little balcony here on the second story. This can be used as sort of a bedroom um, in a single family home. You can just do this, put some stairs leading up to it, or a ladder if you prefer, but generally stairs look better. Uh, let's fill these in. And then down here below, you can have sort of a lounge, maybe a fireplace, although I'm not putting one on this build. Um, and it's usually good to have somewhere where food would be prepared, like a kitchen. Now, we need some stairs leading up to here, because right now you can't get up there. What I'm going to use is um, just some of these. Oh, can't do that because it blocked that window. But just like that. Um, actually, <laughs> I'm going to do them one more over. It'll block that window, but heck, who cares? Now, because these are kind of big, we're going to need to put some stairs over them. Like so. Uh, some of my co-workers here at the MCOE don't like using stairs in this fashion as actual stairs but I figure that's what they're designed for and they do look pretty good at it as in. oops now there's a problem you gotta be careful with this kind of thing in houses with low roofs because right now our roof is getting in the way of our stairs which means we're gonna have to use a ladder to get up here however we can't put it there It'll have to be here. I generally don't like using ladders, but they, they're they okay. Um, and then, for up here, you could use fences for this. I, if it's in a nicer house, though, I usually use glass panes. And just to make it look sturdier, I'm going to put in a few stairs. Um, here and here and do spruce blocks along here instead of slabs. That just makes it look um, a bit sturdier and like it was actually designed to um, stick inside the house. You know, yeah, looks better from underneath. Now, we need a bed. You could use a regular bed. However, that's not what I'm going to do. Because um, I'm going to use some wool blocks to sort of simulate a larger bed, um, like so. Now, this looks kind of weird right now, right? It does, um, but there's a really neat way to fix that, is use some stairs along the edges, like so. You can even break up the patterning by using some slabs, too, if you want, which I think I'm actually going to do, because it looks pretty nice, right? And then... You can do a, a two up there, and a little interior decoration, a flower pot with a fern. Because ferns actually do look really nice in flower pots. There, you've got your bed. Now, people need somewhere to store their stuff, so I'm going to put a chest over here. And, I mean, I know some people don't like using bookshelves, but if used tastefully, they can look pretty nice, like so. So we're putting some bookshelves there. That's your second story. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Now, if we go down to the first floor, you know, this house doesn't have a fire pit, but I think it needs one. So what we're going to do for that is break a hole in this wall. This beautiful wall that we spent so much time working on. We're just going to break a huge hole in it because we need a fireplace. Um, those can be made out of... Um, I like to use usually either um, stone bricks or cobblestone. For this house, we're going to use cobblestone. Uh, and then you're going to do this, kind of like that. Um, now, because this is a wooden floor and we wouldn't want it burning up if this were in real life, we got to put a little bit around here. Actually, for that, we can use stone bricks. Just, but just for the flooring. It's probably all they could afford for this little house, right? And anyway, if you just use one material too much, it can seem kind of overused. So it's good to break things up. Use, use like, 
use materials you don't normally use. Get imaginative. It's more fun that way and can result in some really interesting builds. Now here, um, we're going to use some iron bars because we don't want the cat falling in the fireplace, do we? Now, a couple logs. And then, we're going to light it on fire. Although, this is very important. you got to do slash game rule, do fire tick false if you're building this in a wooden house. Otherwise, all the wood will catch on fire and your house will burn down. That's very important to do, and you do not want to forget it. I've done it once or twice, forgotten about that. It does not end well for anyone. Especially me, though. Because then my house burned down. And nobody likes their house burning down. Not even me. So, build the chimney up here. It's good to make it start with like a square base. Kind of like that. And then build it up so that it becomes um, round. Or as close to round as we can get in a square game. By the top. Then we're going to use some stone slabs. Well, we're going to lower it a bit and then use some stone slabs to cap it off, like so. Now, and then just put these here. And there you have your chimney. We could build some smoke billowing out of it, but I honestly don't normally like doing that. I find it looks kind of weird. And then, um, you know what? I'm going to use some more stone slabs here and here. And then a little bit on the outside, too just to give it that extra little zing. Now, this is looking pretty good. We're almost finished. All we need to do is add a little table and some couches. And for the couches, there are a couple ways to do them. One is like this. Another way is like this with uh, bookshelves at the end, which can look kind of nice. Then there's a third way, which is how we're going to do them today. This creates sort of a more um, comfortable, overstuffed looking couch. And that's doing this. If you're making um, a house, especially for uh, richer people, you might want to do this kind of thing. I find they just look nice. Um, we would not, we're not going to put flower pots on them because that would be weird. Now, we need some uh, a little coffee table kind of thing, not a covfefe table. Um, do this for sort of a weird unbalanced coffee table if you want. Um, you can also do this with stairs on the ends, which creates neat little stands. Um, I'm going to put another flower pot on here. Oops. Not going to light it on fire. Flower pot there. And a tulip in it. Just for that nice little homey feel. And there you have it. We have a nice little rustic handite style house. Only one thing remains. Put in the door. And we're done. And there you have it. Handite style house. Courtesy of Hand Guy. For the MCOE. Now, I hope you're going to go out and build more stuff like this yourself. Although, if you do, maybe credit us. And be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Aren't you glad we didn't say that at the beginning, right? Huh? <laughs> well, this is Hand Guy, MCOE, signing off.